So here we have a question from ECT Physics 2143 at BCIT, found in chapter one, which is electrostatics. And it's actually one of my favorite questions from the term because it combines concepts from a few different chapters. It poses two identical pith balls with a mass of 0.525 kilograms, which I have drawn here and here, are suspended from light threads 28.0 centimeters long, which I have converted to 0.28 meters already here, and have equal charges. The balls repel each other due to the electric charges, and in equilibrium, the angle between the two threads is 33.0 degrees. See figure 2, which is obviously this. Determine the charge on each pith ball. So, as with most physics problems, it's first important to think about what we are being asked to solve. In this case, it's a charge on each pith ball, but we are given the fact that it's the same charge on both pith balls. So, let's go over the concept involved in this question that can help lead us to the answer. When you hear equilibrium, the first concept that should pop into mind is forces. This is due to the fact that by definition, equilibrium means that all the forces cancel out to create a net acceleration of zero. There's no change in velocity. The important equation to glean from this concept is that the sum of the force on an object equals the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the object. In a minute, we will draw a free body diagram, and from there we can expand on it with equations to help solve this problem. The next concept to keep in mind is electrostatics. This should come as no surprise as, well, this question is pulled to the electrostatics chapter. It's in this chapter that we cover charge, and this question in particular asks us about point charges. So from there, we can look at the formula sheet and pull out the equation F for force equals K for Coulomb's constant times charges Q sub one and Q sub two divided by the distance r squared, which if we look at our figure two here, it is the distance between the two fifth balls. As noted previously, the charges are the same, so we can reduce this a bit to f equals k q squared over r squared, and we will be solving for this variable here. So now that we have all this, let us make our free body diagram from which we can derive how to properly arrange our force equations. As the charge and the mass are the same on each pith ball, the forces will be the same for both balls, so we can get away with drawing the forces for just one pith ball and solve from there. The first force we can draw will be the weight from gravity, which we will label W. The second will be the tension from the string, which is labeled T, which will go up at an angle at 16.5 degrees from the vertical, as that is what 33 degrees divided by 2 is. I will draw dotted lines to dictate the T sub X and the T sub Y components of the tension force. And lastly, we have our electrostatic force, which we will label F subscript Q. So now we have what we need to properly arrange and construct our force equations. From this diagram, it should be clear that this will be a two-dimensional force problem. And as mentioned earlier, another important piece of information given to us is that the forces are in equilibrium. So we can start off by writing out that the sum of the vertical forces equals zero. And with some space below, we will write that the sum of the horizontal forces also equals zero. So let's start off with the vertical force equation. We can see that the two opposing forces keeping it in equilibrium are the vertical tension force and the weight. From our free body diagram, we can see that the vertical component of the tension force is adjacent to the 16.5 degree angle. So we will rewrite this as cosine 16.5 degrees multiplied by the tension equals the mass times the gravity since that is what the equation for weight is. Now, let's jump for a second to the horizontal force equation and see what we can do with that. As we can see with our free, free body diagram, the horizontal forces that cancel each other out will be the horizontal component of the tension force, 
and the electrostatic force. From here, we can rewrite this as sine 16.5 degrees multiplied by the tension equal to this business over here, which I will copy down, k times q squared divided by r squared. Now, we might be tempted to figure out what these tension forces are, but I actually think the easiest way to tackle this is just to look at the vertical force component and realize that we can isolate t here. And then we can do direct substitution from the vertical force equation to the horizontal part. So I will rewrite this vertical force equation. Tension equals mass times g divided by cosine 16.5 degrees. From here, we can substitute that into the horizontal equation. Let's do a little mental math here first. When we substitute the equation in, we will get sine 16.5 divided by cosine 16.5. So I'll just use a trig identity and we can just write tan 16.5 times mass times g equals k multiplied by q squared over r squared. Okay, so now before we continue on and rearrange, let us take a step back and ask, what do we know and what are we trying to figure out? So I'll scroll down to this list of variables that I've already written. We were given the mass for the pith balls of 0 0.525 kilograms. G, of course, is 9.81 meters per second squared. K is Coulomb's constant. We can look up and find out that it is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 Newton meters squared over Coulomb squared. We don't know R yet, but we can figure that out by looking at figure 2 here. We could use cosine law, but I'd actually prefer to split this in the middle. And after which, we can just figure this side here and multiply by 2. And that will give us the total distance. So we'll just write 2 times sine 16.5 degrees times 0 0.280 meters to get a total of 0 0.159 meters. And we will just write that here as well. We don't know Q yet, but that is what this question is asking for. And we have everything we need to rearrange this equation. And then we can just fill in the variables. So we'll just write now that tan 16.5 degrees times mass, times g, times r squared, which we brought over from the other side here, divided by Coulomb's constant, k, which we have also brought over from the other side, equals q squared. We can square root both sides here. I'll just cross out the exponent 2. And now we can just plug in the variables. Tan 16.5 times 0 0.525 kilograms, times 9.81 meters per second squared, times 0 0.159 meters squared, all divided by 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 newton meters squared over coulomb squared, all of which we will square root. And if you put this in a calculator, you'll get the correct answer with three significant figures of 2.07 microcoulombs.